Hey, and welcome to episode nine of A Level Deeper. My name is Chad Miles. Here's a quick question for you. How's your agility these days? And I'm actually not referring to movement at all, don't worry. I'm not really too worried about your ability to do the shuttle run. I'm talking about mental agility. So that's why the company's named Agile. And so it's we, we say it's an agile mindset. So that's there's two reasons Agile comes in. Agile planning. So Agile planning or Agile software or Agile management is actually a modular-based system that goes through the, the, the highest priority problem and fixes it and then goes back into the system and then finds the next one. That's basically, that's like the number one actual way to that software is created is just like make the core system and then just go and fix the problems based on priority. That's today's guest, John Oliver. John and I met a few years ago through a networking group, and we've always connected on things that went a level deeper. He's someone whom I've admired for his reflective nature and thoughtfulness, which don't always feel like ways you might describe a financial advisor. About eight years in, so it was very analytical. I mean, I would search, you know, I knew everything about every, how much you could deposit. And about eight years in, I said, you know, this, this business is not about numbers at all. <laughs> you know, this, this business is about people. I wanted to have John on the show to break down some of the psychology of money and discuss fear as it relates to finances. We get to that in the second part of our conversation, but we start with a much more personal discussion that I think will give you an incredible insight into the multifaceted person that John is. I think today's conversation is a mix of both tactical and reflective, which is a dynamic duo in my opinion. So without further ado, enjoy episode nine of A Level Deeper. It's titled, It's Not About the Numbers with John Oliver. All right, John. So this this takes me takes me back to let's let's just bring people to the the first podcast that you and I ever recorded, which was I, I'm not sure, maybe five or six years ago, we were sitting in a coffee shop in Brighton, Michigan, and we said, Hey, I, I think we each saw some value in this whole podcasting thing. And we're like, well, let's just try recording a conversation. And I think what, what ensued from my perspective was a, a meaningful conversation, but one that maybe you, you couldn't even hear because we didn't have microphones. We didn't have any kind of uh, podcasting equipment. But I think that was our first foray into, into this podcast world a few years ago, wasn't it? It was. And that, that was classic. Uh, we, we basically just set up the camera and took a picture of two people talking. <laughs> I think that's what ended up happening there. But, uh, but for me, you know, it was, it was, it was a good experience. And uh, I think it was something we were both kind of like just curious about and maybe a little like nervous, but we did it, you know, and that's, that's the thing that that's the key. I think we did it and, uh, and we grew closer, you know, together, our friendship continued to grow. So that, that was cool too. So it was, a, it was a win-win, even though it didn't make it to the, to the podcast land. <laughs> well, I think that's an interesting concept in and of itself, right? This idea that sometimes we can we can do things, we can engage in different things, and they might not turn out as we expected. That that podcast, the, what it actually turned out to be from a production quality standpoint, I don't think was what we intended. However, as, as you and I have talked about a couple of times, yeah, that was that was the beginning of us starting a friendship. And, you know, it, it's just kind of an interesting idea of what, when I think about like the word success, and I feel like you and I have had a lot of conversations that have revolved around what success is, what that looks like. And what I just heard you say there is the thought that, well, maybe there, we can take certain things from these experiences that we have in life. So you and I recorded that podcast. It didn't really turn out the way that we were hoping for. And yet there were a lot of things that we gained from that experience. And I'm just not sure that that's a perspective that a lot of people have. Correct. <laughs> I think I, I try personally, n- not as a you know, preacher or a motivational speaker, but just, just showing people my, my self-awareness journey, I'm calling it basically. And just the things that I'm learning, you know, and that's one of the main things is that there's a lot of things we do or happen to us in life. It's what you take from it that actually counts. You know, I mean, the reality is, you know, I'm going to walk out here today, go to work or go to the office and something might happen to me, you know? And so what am I going to, 
how am I get, what, what am I going to, you know, get from that? You know, and if we, I think if we come kind of at everything, you know, very humbly and grateful just to be alive, then you can get a lot of stuff off of everything that happens to you. And it's very positive. You know, you, you can spin it very positively because you shouldn't even be, you know, you shouldn't even be born, right? Or you you could be sick or, you know, there's so many things that could. So just understanding, like just being grateful for, you know, for life, you know, that, that to me is, that's the huge perspective. And that's a great example of going back to the podcast is like, you know, I remember being like nervous, you know, and, you know, and, and all these things and you just like this anxious, you know, builds up and, and, uh, but, but we, but we still like, you know, looking back on it, I mean, we've, we've grown, I know you have, but I mean, I know personally speaking for myself, I've grown so much even from then um, that, you know, we look back and we see all the good that it, that it brought and just some, something as little as kind of a sketchy, you know, conversation in the corner of a coffee shop, you know? So, yeah. You, you mentioned these words, humble and grateful. And this perspective of, of being grateful for the opportunity just to be alive. Did, did something happen in your life that caused you to think that way? Yeah, I think a lot of things, (laughs) you know, I mean, a lot of things it's, you know, it's just like I said, everybody's going to have all these different events that, that happen to them. And it's kind of how you, you know, how you connect those dots, you know, that, that's, that's how it's going to kind of change, you know, the way you look at it. So you could be, you could be better about a lot of things that happen, but I would say it was probably just starting to lose people close to me in life, you know, probably about, about 10 years ago or so. It's like, you know, as you, you get older, you're like, you know, you don't really experience a lot of people leaving your life. And, and then once you do, it's, you know, you're, you're like, wow, you know, this, this is pretty crazy, you know? And so if you, if you look at it, you know, as like, wow, you know, we're just, you know, we're just thankful to be alive and you should take advantage of every moment. I mean, that switch, if everybody could just flick that switch. And I feel like it's happening more with people that I associate myself with and, and other people that I try to extend, a, you know, a hand to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do that as, as much as possible. So I would say it was probably, you know, people, you know, in my life and, and as well as the circumstances in my life, just like being self-aware and then saying like, you know what, I don't like everything that I see, you know, that I'm doing and how I'm living. Why, you know, what am I doing? Why, you know, why is that the case, you know? And then just being real honest with yourself, you know, and assessing that. So as as you were sort of self-evaluating, what were some of the things that you were seeing about yourself, seeing about your life that made you kind of pause a little bit or scratch your head and say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure this is, this is good for me long-term. Yeah. Just being, uh, so I've, I've kind of always been, I kind of grew up just very anxious because I'd like to be prepared, you know? So I'm always trying to be over-prepared and the more you over-prepare, you're not, you're not living in the moment. <laughs> you're, you're living in the future. And so every time we're living in the future, we're, we're not present, you know? And so that, that gives us anxiety. And so I was feeling that exactly, you know, and I'm, don't get me wrong. I, it's not cured, you know, but the reality is I, uh, that perspective has changes. And I, and, and just at any moment I can just say to myself, just relax, you know, you're, you're living in the future again, you know? If I could, if I didn't do that, if I didn't look at it that way, I, I might not be able to correct, correct that. But because of, because of that, because of being aware of, you know, who I am and, and how I operate, that, that allows me to, you know, to correct myself and, and say, you know, let's, let's go enjoy what I'm doing here, you know, rather than, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen? You know what I mean? It's like, what's the worst that could happen? You know, really? You know, there's really not that that many negative things. You know, if you're just going out, just living your best life, it's like, you know, we're, what, what's the worst that's really going to happen? You know, in all reality, if you think about it, you know, 
if maybe you don't do that thing that you were going to trying to accomplish, you know, but, but just like we said, when we were doing our first, you know, podcast, right. We didn't maybe accomplish exactly what we were looking for, but boy, did we, we learn a lot. So yeah, I think anxiety, uh, it was one thing, um, maybe, maybe trying to be like, you know, maybe being like trying to be too perfect, you know, and then sometimes when you try to be too perfect, you might pull back and say, okay, well then if I'm not going to be really good at that, you know, I'll just focus on the things I'm really good at. So that kind of restricts, you don't get challenged, you know, you don't, you don't grow, you don't open up, you know? So, so those are things, I think these are very common and in, in many people, but they were very common to myself. And, uh, and I, I think about those things all the time. And if you look at some of the things that I try to, you know, try to, you know, preach or, you know, or just, you know, help somebody with, I, those are, those are often those, those things about just being like enjoying the journey. You're always going to have, you know, it's like always like, well, you know, once I get done with this, you know, I'll, then I'll be here and everything will be better. You know, it's like, it doesn't end. <laughs> You're just going to have another thing to do. So, you know, but you know, some of the, some of the keys to, to that is, you know, again, enjoying the journey, which has changed for me over the last decade or so, five, 10 years, um, focusing, not necessarily focusing on only one thing, but really just having a focus on, on what you're doing. So more clarity, you know, so that, that helps with, you know, if you're anxious, you know, so th those are some of the things that I've been doing, but, but yeah, I would say it was probably, you know, losing, losing, losing people that were close, close around me and just not really being comfortable with that. And just doing a self awareness check, you know, over those, over those years. Yeah. So I mean, as you talk about losing people close to you, and you know, I, I want to recognize as well that you you also recently lost your father, which unfortunately is something that we share in common. It's it's been interesting in my life that I've noticed the same thing as far as I've I've learned a lot through loss. I've I've learned a lot through death and. I actually think some of my sort of biggest growth or some of the biggest changes that I've made in my outlooks in life have come as a result of experiencing death and experiencing loss. And, you know, I, I wrote a piece recently that was just kind of reflecting on when I was introduced to death and that experience and how I, I, I was having a conversation with my wife, Eileen, and I just found it interesting how she was sharing, you know, I think she, she has a lot, a lot more kind of tangible fears around death, around losing people. And she's lost grandparents, but, but maybe hasn't had a, a death really close to her as you and I have, have experienced in our lives. And, you know, I was just kind of reflecting and sharing with her, like, you know, it's, it's interesting. I don't find, I have this really intense fear of death. I feel like, I have experienced it. I've gone through it. My family has. And I've also experienced that I can go through something like that, something very dark, something very difficult. I can go through a grieving process, and yet I can still experience joy in my life. I can still experience good things in my life. There's still positives that can come from this situation. And it seems like, based on what you're saying, loss and death has played a very similar role for you. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, it's, again, it's, if, you, if you're not reflecting, you, you're not going to notice, you're not going to know that, you know, you're not going to know or see the changes, but through reflection, I mean, just recently with my father passing, you know, my brother was like, he's like, thanks for, you know, thanks for being there, you know, thanks for being the stoic person during that time, because I was, you know, what I did was I learned from, it, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm actually like, my faith is so strong. And, you know, I was, you know, doing, you know, my work with, with, you know, with my faith and, you know, he would just kept telling me, so, you know, a certain word, you know? So I'm like this whole time, I'm, I'm praying on this one word and I'm, I'm really understanding like, you know, something just is so much more powerful than just him passing, you know? Um, 
you know, cause he, my father, for example, was, uh, he, he was super active, super healthy. And then, but he also, it's like, you know, back in the day, you would, you would go play like, you know, 50 softball games, but you'd, you'd smoke, you know, you'd be a smoker, you know, every, after every game kind of thing. And now you think about that and you're like, I <laughs> like, does that even seem right? You know, but he was like that. He was super active, very athletic, um, and very healthy. So when his diseases kind of caught up with him, you know, it was a big deal. Um, and because of that, he, he started to, I mean, he just wasn't living, you know, very, a very healthy life. He was starting to get, you know, depressed and, and things like that. You know, it was just, it was tough on him. It was tough on all of us, of course. Uh, so, but when he left, I was like, you know, he, his body was just not, it's not, wasn't for this world anymore. You know, I mean, it just, it, it shut down, you know? So, but that, but, but just the experience and, and having faith and reflection, um, those things helped me through it, you know, and, and actually I learned, I learned something and I'm, and I'm trying like right now I'm trying to, you know, whoever I'm talking to, I'm talking to them about forgiveness, you know, and that's like, that's the phrase that, was basically bestowed on me during this time. It's like forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. So. Why, why do you think it was that word? For, for a lot of reasons, you know, um, but mainly I think that, so like when my father was, you know, not sick, his, his issue was he was a perfectionist, you know, and it, it drove him nuts. You know, I mean, and I, maybe I got a little bit of that myself from him. You know, I was just talking about that, right? Um, and because of that, you know, it makes you anxious. You know what I mean? And it make it can make you annoyed. It can make you angry. You know, it can. It's not healthy. You know, I mean, none of us can be perfect. You know, so if you think you can try to be perfect, you can try so hard. <laughs> um, and I'm talking about I've never seen anyone like this. You know, I mean, we would go golf and. I mean, I would be in the car for a half an hour while he cleaned everything, <laughs> including the trunk, <laughs> you know, and I learned from that about taking care of your stuff and, you know, being a good steward of the things that we are so lucky to have, you know, but at the same time, I was like, you kind of think you're like, is this normal? You know, and I think it affected him and made him, you know, not the nicest person all the time, you know, to be quite frank, you know, God rest his soul. I mean, and you know, the reality is, you know, we, we all kind of felt a little bit of that. My parents got divorced at a, at a young age. Um, and so we, we all kind of, you know, the ripple effect hit me and my sister and my brother, you know, and, and all of my surrounding family. So like for me though, when we were younger or when I was younger, he, you know, I was his right hand man, you know, we did everything together. I was, you know, he had a Lance, he had a Dairy Queen business and I helped him run that. And, uh, we just did all kinds of projects, you know? So it was, I was always, I was just always, I think that's kind of my, some of my flexibility and me, you know, just kind of going with the flow and being a good teammate, you know, but that was good for him. You know, I noticed that that was some of his calmest moments because he wasn't, no one was like fighting his every move. I was just letting him be. But because of that, I mean, that showed me I, what I learned from that is that, you you know, being perfect, you know, it doesn't exist. And so that that kind of, you know, that was some of that self-awareness of being, you know, being anxious and saying like, well, if I'm not, you know, going to be the best at this, then why even try? You know, some of those things, you know, th those were not those are not good traits. You know what I mean? Um, but. So going back to the forgiveness, I mean, you know, God was telling me personally, so I'm very, I have a very heavy, you know, great, great relationship with my faith. And he just kept telling me forgiveness, forgiveness. And I'm thinking about the people around me, you know, that still seemed angry, you know what I mean? 
at some of the things that he did. So, you know, that, that I think that's where forgiveness came in because the reality is like, you know, you can't, you can't hold on to, to anger. You know, you have to, you have to forgive. And, and so I started doing a lot of, you know, studying on forgiveness and just the reality that forgiveness is not for that person. You're not trying to let that person off the hook or, you know, allow that person to do anything to you ever again. It's about yourself. You know, it's about forgiveness is, is more about yourself than it is about the other person. You, that allows you to have that, your good heart back and for you not to be annoyed, for you not to be angry, right? You know, so it allows you to move forward. It's not for them, it's for you, you know? And so, but I, and I think everybody, everybody is somebody, is annoyed with somebody in their life and you should forgive them, you know? Whether they did anything, whatever they did to you, you should forgive them. I don't care what they did to you, you know? Sometimes you'll see it, like you'll see a, like a YouTube video of, you know, man shot his son, you know, and then they're in the courtroom and the person's like, I forgive you, you know what I mean? And it's, and it's not, again, it's not for that person. And it might've been nice for that person to hear. That's fine, you know, but the reality is they have someone else they have to talk to. <laughs> They've got to go ask for forgiveness, you know, but, but for, 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 for us, it's forgiving that person so that we can move forward, you know? And just continue to be a natural, you know, healthy human being and, and not hold grudges, you know, not have vengeance, all that stuff. Not good. You know, it's not going to allow you to be the best person that you can be. Yeah. I mean, what what do you think is on what's on the other side of forgiveness? If if it's letting go of some of these things, and I, I think that's an interesting perspective that taking more of the internal approach that it's actually more about about you. and so. If if some of your message or encouragement to people is to think about forgiveness, what's what's on the other side of that? What is the result of of forgiveness in your life? I started this podcast for a very specific reason. I crave meaningful conversations and wanted to create an outlet to have more of them in my life. By recording discussions I was already having with friends and new conversations with new people. I guess I just wanted to bring deeper, more thoughtful conversations to a larger audience because I think we all have an opportunity to grow from them. I got to tell you, it makes me uncomfortable to do so, but I'm asking for your help. I'm imagining a show funded by the people who want to support deeper conversations. So for the cost of two coffees per month, you can help keep this show going. And as a thank you, get access to some exclusive behind the scenes content that isn't available anywhere else. In the episode description is a link to our Patreon where you can pledge your support and automatically get access to all the bonuses. So after the show, I'd love if you'd head there and check it out and thank you in advance for your support. Okay, back to the episode. That it allows you to, it really allows you to, you know, show love to, to everybody. Because a lot of times, you know, we just go just in an everyday, you know, uh, occurrence of just like going to the coffee shop and the person, you know, made your coffee bad and you're like, well, I can't believe that, you know? And if you, if you have that other perspective, you, you won't do that. You know, you're like, well, they made it wrong. You know what I mean? Maybe either I have two options. I can go back and get it fixed or I can enjoy it, you know? So it allows, it gives you resilience, you know, it allows you to continue to, to really, to be, be a lover and not a hater, you know, and that, that allows you to be yourself and to help other people. If you're not doing that, you're, you're going to be more selfish, right? Because now you're thinking about you, what happened to you and how can you fix it? You know, but if you're forgive it, now I can move forward, right? Now I can be helpful to others. And that's just so much more powerful, right? I mean, that's what we all should be doing, helping other people, not worrying about ourselves, you know? So I think that just allows ourselves to, to really be, you know, the, the person that, you know, who we're, where we're supposed to be, not, not necessarily, you know, the person we want to be. And we're thinking about ourselves, like, I want to be this and I want to do that. And, you know, and it start 
okay, what do we, what do you keep saying to yourself? You know, it's like, well, I keep saying to myself, I, <laughs> so maybe it should be, you know, Hey, I'm going to forgive this person. You know, like I just, uh, an example, you were there, you went to the office at the, our old office. We, we had to leave it because they put the landlord, put a gym behind us and we couldn't just do normal. Uh, we couldn't do normal, um, uh, meetings with clients, you know, it was just too loud. There was music there literally. Um, and everybody was, you know, mad, you know, everybody, our, ourselves, our friends, our family. And then, you know, at the end, you know, I told him, I said, you know what? I, I was like, this is kind of, this is your problem. This is something you have to deal with and, you know, God bless you. And I hope the best for you, you know, like that's it. I mean, there's really nothing that was the, this is reality, right? So for me to sit there and hold a grudge, you know, what could we do to this guy? You know, let's sue him, you know, and all this. And it's like, no, you know, you, now I'm wasting time on, on doing things that are not productive. Whereas forgiveness allowed me to move forward and look, and I found the, the best office that I've ever, you know, that's fit our company so well. And, you know, we're, you know, we're acclimated to it. It's in a much better, it's actually just a better office in general. And, but who knew, right? You know, so. It's, I, I always think of, of holding grudges or holding all that kind of negative energy as it, it's very stuck energy. Like it's, it's just energy that you hold inside of you and it swirls and it swirls and it swirls. And I, I fall victim to it a lot. And yet you, you just realize that idea of forgiveness, that idea of just letting that energy go, just releasing it, just, just let it go. And it's amazing how much that can free up within you to experience more positive things or, or even just experience nothing in the form of like peace. And, yeah, exactly. And peace. Boy, that's, yeah, exactly. that's a good feeling as well, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I would say for those out there that are like, I can never forget. It's like, you're not, because forgiveness is not too to allow that person to continue to do those things to you. It's not to say that that person, what they did to you was right. That, you know, we already know that part. That's why you're forgiving them. You know, that those were, that was wrong. And that to, to continue this type of activity is probably not, you're not harboring that, you know, that's not what the forgiveness is. It doesn't mean you might forgive someone that either you could just walk away for, from for the rest of your life. And that's okay too. You know, just because you forgive them doesn't mean you have to stick with them. You know what I mean? So that, that's the difference. And you might, you might think back. I think a good thing to think about is to think back about those people that did affect you in a negative way in your past and just think about and just forgive them. And then it also allows you to say, who, who are we to judge what, who, what they were going through? You know, like, so for example, with my mother, he was going through a lot. He was not built normally, you know? So if anyone was wanting to be angry at the way maybe he was over, you know, many different years throughout our lives, that's, that's, that's us saying that we didn't even know really what was, you know, what, what he was dealing with, you know what I mean? And again, it goes back to the, the person that you smile to and they don't smile back and you're like, oh, what a, what a mean person. Or it's kind of like, you know what? That's okay. I'm going to just keep smiling to the next person. Because I don't know what's wrong. I mean, that person could have just lost their dad. You know, they're just on a walk. They happen to be not so happy. And that's okay, you know. So we're not going to penalize them for that. You know, we're just going to continue and, and you know, be, be, be the best person that we can be to, to them. And, you know, we just don't know what people are going through, you know. So, and if you don't, if you can't really forgive, then you're never going to really grow and, and allow yourself to, to help those type of people. I mean, I know people that don't give other people a second chance. And when they actually come out and they say they like, did this wrong and then people like they hate them, you know, like, oh, I don't like that person. And you know, I'm like, that's just like wasted energy. You, know? <laughs> you don't even know that person. You don't even know what that person was going through let alone, you know, this person really has nothing to do with your life. So why are we going to hate them? You know what I mean? So it goes back to just more wasted energy, right? 100%. 100%. Well, I just want to recognize that I, I appreciate you sharing about your father. I appreciate you sharing about, you know, some of the forgiveness that 
that you're still it seems like you know still kind of working through and i think that that i i I just i appreciate that that you're willing to to share some of that with me and i think you know i've from my experience in being able to reflect on my father and talk about him and that's why i wanted to start the show and why i wanted to call it a level deeper so that we can have conversations like this that frankly we're just not typically having with people on a daily basis so i wanted to first recognize that i i appreciate you engaging in that conversation with me i is as we've been texting a little bit, you know, these, these past few weeks or, or messaging and, you know, just hearing some of your reflections on your father. That was cool for me to hear. And, and it's cool to hear. We can learn a lot from our fathers, a lot from our parents, a lot from a lot of people around us. And we can learn things that we want to emulate in our lives and that we want to carry forward. And we can recognize that they're not perfect people. And we can learn things that maybe we want to do differently in our lives. And so anyway, I just, I appreciate you being willing to reflect on all of that and share all of that. And this is kind of the fun part of the conversation because now we can share with people. And oh, by the way, John's a financial advisor. <laughs> Which, <laughs> oh, to yeah. Me, What's that? To, to, to me, is, is I, that? I, I, I say it that way uh-huh. because in some ways, I think it's easy to build up this this image in our minds of what when I say, when I say those words financial advisor we think of someone yeah. who's really analytical and 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 um, maybe not very emotional and all of these things and so I I, I said it that way just because totally I, I've really enjoyed engaging with you and building a friendship over the last few years and it's just kind of been so interesting to me that you don't seem to fit the mold of what I think of when I think of a financial advisor so. I'm curious, how did that become the career path that you chose? And how did that tie into some of the things that we've been talking about? Yeah, it ties into a lot of things that we've been talking about, that's for sure. Um, it started really when I was really young. I, 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 I am, I'm kind of, a lot of advisors are kind of right and left brain. So we can kind of turn it on, turn it off. Um, and so like, you know, I grew up, I was, I liked drafting. I thought I was going to be an engineer or a, or an architect, you know? So I had that in me. Um, and when I was younger, it was just, I just loved business and just like learning about businesses. You know, I, I started a landscape company in my teens. I helped my dad with this Dairy Queen. So I was always wanted to be like, I just remember asking my dad, I'm like, when can we, when can we start doing the books? You know, he's like, you're 13 years old. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? I'm like, I just want to know how it works, you know? So I think it's just that, that curiosity, my curiosity does happen to be on the, on the business side, you know, uh, at least it especially was when I was, when I was younger. Um, and then I, I said, and I started just, I taught myself, you know, stocks when I was like 18. So I was about 19 years old. So for more than half my life, I've been, and, you know, thinking about business and, and stocks and, you know, how they, you know, how they work and operate and what they can do for you. But um, when you try to get into this financial advising type business, when you're like before you even graduate from from school. So I had a landscape company. I was going to college and nobody really wants to hire you. They're like, yeah, just go and get your degree and then we'll, you know, because unfortunately, the industry is very, it's very more sales oriented. So it's either you can, so they tell me like, you can go sell life insurance or you can, you know, we'll, you can wait a little bit till you kind of fit the mold and then we'll, we'll put you out there and you can be a full-fledged financial advisor. But that wasn't me. You know, I was always, you know, I was like breaking, breaking rules and saying like, I don't, I mean, I just, I want to, I, I really, I think I wanted to just kind of manage like wealth, like a, a more on that side. So it was a little less on the people side. Um, so it's more of the analytical part. But once I finally was, you know, I went to Detroit College of Business and, and then I wrapped up the landscape company because I said, okay, I think I, I want to do this full time. Um, I, I did end up getting my first job as a financial advisor uh, at a credit union, actually, which was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. It was just, just the volume was great and uh, people were, were, were great. You know, it was just a good atmosphere. Um, I met some really great mentors there. So it was, it was a great place to start. 
but the you know the basis of the story is about eight years in so it's very analytical i mean i would search you know i knew everything about every how much you could deposit you know and about eight years in i said you know this this business is not about numbers at all <laughs> you know this this business is about people you know but one thing that was helping me that I didn't really know was, was a trait of mine was that I was, I had a lot of empathy, you know, and I listened to people. Um, I don't know if I just, I think, cause I was just curious, you know, so I naturally just cared for people, always putting myself in their shoes and listening to what they actually had to say. And so what I found was, was it interesting that the numbers just left. No, no one even wanted to talk about the numbers. I'm like, don't you want to like review? They're like, no, you're, and I'm like, I don't get it. You know? So after those eight years or so, so that was like in 2000 and, uh, about 2008, 2009 or so, which is an uh, interesting time in the markets. They were actually crashing <laughs> in 08, but, um, I found that my, you know, to know how much you could put in a Roth IRA, for example, was pretty much meaningless. You know, I mean, you can just, you can Google it. You know what I mean? It's not that hard. Um, you know, it'd be quick on some of that stuff and, you know, to make life easier in conversation with people, it's important. And I had it all in there, you know, it's like a, you know, a filing cabinet and everything, but, um, and my love for business didn't stop. I mean, I, I've always will continue to, and even to this day, um, I'm kind of the head manager of our portfolio still. So I still love that, but mainly what I'm loving is I'm, I'm loving the connecting of the dots of, of things rather than again it's still it's even greater than the numbers essentially like the numbers are just part of the of the business story you know it's about a third you know so but you know about eight years or so nine years in just learning that like this business really is not about the numbers it's about the people and that really helped me because i i just i just noticed that less and less people wanted to talk about the numbers, you know, they just wanted to talk. So really what you end up doing, if, you know, for some advisors, not, not everyone gets to this level. Some people are just more, they're more by the numbers and they're trying to get the job done. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think the reality is you should probably have a team of people and some people might be like that, you know, and some people might be super analytical, you know, and I think there's another level on my side where, you know, I would love to maybe hire a psychologist one day, you know what I mean? Just straight up, you know? So that's like the plethora of like having, you know, each of the areas covered and I'm kind of in the middle, you know, and that and a lot of advisors are, but, but just understanding that um, allowed me to really get things done for clients, you know, because it's not about the numbers. It's more about them actually having the trust and, and feeling that you are, uh, actually care, you know, and your center. And so a lot of times over the years, uh, people would tell me multiple times, they'd say, you know what, John, about you, you're just very sincere. You know, you, you just, I just don't know what it is necessarily, but I just know you care and, and we can get stuff done, you know? So instead of telling them they could put $5,000 in this account, that doesn't usually get them to, to actually act, you know? And to actually get financial planning done, you actually need to act. <laughs> it's actually all it is is a lot of little tasks that need to be done, you know. But most people are are doing, you know, they're worried about other things, right? So your clients are worried about all the wrong things when they're when they're trying to do their financial planning. They're worried about their grandchildren. <laughs> they're worried about their old job. So these are all the great things that I want them to worry about. They're like this is what I want you to be worrying about. But when you're doing your financial planning, you can't worry about that. That that's not gonna you're you're gonna procrastinate. You're not gonna make the decisions. So you got to be kind of in the middle there, of you know, of both you know understanding the person, and then seeing what that what makes them actually want to act, and then and then bringing them to that you know to, so that we can actually get stuff done you know, and then saying to them afterwards saying you know what. I, I want you to, like, I just had a, a, a kind of a newer client, I guess. She's kind of been with me for a few years, but through different uh, purposes. And she's like, you know, I'm so busy. 
and I'm with my grandchildren in the summer and I'm like, that's awesome. That's exactly what I want you to be thinking about. I'm like, just give me a bunch of paperwork and we'll start working for you, you know, because that's what we're going to do. I don't want, I don't want you to worry about this part. I want you to worry about your eight grandchildren. I don't want you to worry about, you know, are you going to have enough money to, you know, to live or not, you know? Well, so yeah, when you're saying it's not about the numbers and you're also talking about your, your desire to bring in a psychologist, you know, this, this was part of the conversation I was excited to have with you today is, is around the psychology of money, because that's been my experience as well, is that so often it really has nothing to do with, with the numbers. It has to do with all of the feelings and the emotions and the fears. And what are the things as you're working with your clients around money that has nothing to do with the numbers? What are the things that are actually on people's minds that as you kind of set the numbers aside, what do you find is, is, is the most common stories or things that, that are actually going on with people as it relates to their money? Usually it's, and this is interesting, goes back a little bit to our conversation before, but it's usually like particular events that happened in their life that are surrounding their, their visualization of what money is, you know, or what wealth is. And it could be just the littlest thing. Like my dad bought Ford stock in 2006 and it went down to $3, you know, at, it was 30 and it went down to like three, you know. How much money did he have in it? Five thousand dollars, <laughs> you know. It's like, so, you know what I mean. So it's like these little events that were somewhat meaningless, but they really they they aren't to the client. You know, they're they're like, wow, th- these are things that scare me. So what I'm finding mainly that you have to get over is the fear. Fear is probably the number one thing that clients are you know, kind of bringing to you. They're, they're fearful of a lot of different things, fear of being overwhelmed. Like they can't manage all the different falls in the air, you know, fear that they're going to lose all their money because, you know, because of some situation that maybe their dad bought some Ford stock 20 years ago. Um, so it's that, th- those are the things that we're really trying to break down is it's a lot of, a lot of fears. And so, like for myself, uh, I think I've just kind of maybe wired this way, but I was, I'm able to, to put myself in their shoes, but at the same time, when I need to get out of their shoes and then, and be that calm headed, you know, person that, you know, and that's a lot of, like a lot of the things that I've done, you know, for myself, self-awareness really came It's kind of funny. I said about 10 years ago, right? So me realizing that this business is not about the the numbers. It's about the people. And then I'm like, well, you can't help others until you help yourself. You know what I mean? And so doing that self-awareness journey for these many, many years, because you would say to yourself like, well, if if I can't understand this or I I can't be calm or comfortable during this situation, then how do I expect my client to be? You know what I mean? And so I'll be that person, you know, and I've, I've always been that, that, person but i just had i think connect the dots to 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 get it you know to be more more useful for other people right it was more kind of internal had to kind of externalize it a little bit and say you know these are some of the things that i can help you with and being that calmness you know during storms and actually allowing them to to find opportunities during you know during poor times the, that's the you know that's the key to me helping that client because they're going to always be fearful almost always even when something like when things go up they're like well shouldn't we sell now i mean look, look how good it's done you know what i mean i'm fear of losing that gain right fear of losing the money fear of you know and then the other thing is you know then they're also fearful of you know like stop working you know like i i've worked my whole life and now i'm going to stop working what do i do what do I do with my time? Where does the money come from? You know, so. what have you what have you found to be? How have you found, or what have you been? What what have you found to be the most effective way to help people overcome those fears and do something yeah. about it? So that's why the company is named Agile, and so it's we we say it's an agile mindset, but really breaking things down into modules, and then breaking down things into smaller steps. And, and, and just, and just 
working through those consistently. So you're always getting through. So the modules to us would be like income planning or tax planning, but, and there's, there's nine of them, but going through those always constantly. So that's, there's two reasons agile comes in agile planning. So agile planning or agile software or agile management is actually a modular based system that goes through the, the, the highest priority problem and fixes it and then goes back into the system and then finds the next one fixes it, goes through the system. You just continue to do that. That's what agile management is in like a MBA or agile software planning, like to actually create software. That's basically, that's like the number one actual way to that software is created is just like make the core system and then just go and fix the problems based on priority, right? And then, so the agile mindset, we always tell them like, what we're trying to do is just we're going to consistently always try to make each of these modules the best that they can be so that when we're, when we're uh, approached with some sort of problem, right, we have the agility to take that problem on head on and actually be better off after. You're actually better during turbulence or during you know, market downturns or a passing in your family. Any of these things, you're actually the same or better off financially, okay? <laughs> Maybe not emotionally if someone passed away, but uh, financially you are, you're no different or you're in an actual better standing than you were when you started. And so that's, and I think of it like even like as an athlete, you know, if you're like say a running back and that person, if you have momentum and you have agility, when you meet that tackler head on, they actually, you can use that to your advantage so that if you can get through that tackle, now you've, now it's like green, green grass, right? Now you've got nothing but the, the end zone, you know? And so and that's, that's what we do with our clients. And we say, we're going to have an agile mindset. They say, what's that? And so it's, and we're just all, we're just going to sit there and work nonstop tirelessly on your plan. You're not going to even know that we're doing it. We're just going to always be working on little things. And then we might shoot you an email and say, Hey, we would like to get this done. And then they say, that's it, just this one thing. And I'm like, yep, at this moment, that's the only one thing that you need to do. And now they can actually get it done, you know? So now they're not even thinking about anything else. There's no fear because they're like, John told me to get a pay stub. <laughs> it's for him. <laughs> that's it. You know, I'm, I don't even know what he wants it for, you know? So there's no fear there, right? They're not thinking about why do I even, why do I even want it in a sense? You know what I mean? And then we come with the other, we show them all the little tasks that we've done. We say, look, look at all these things we've done. You're just at a better place now than you were just like, you know, six months ago. So that means what, if something happens to you in a negative manner, you're going to actually be prepared for it. You're always prepared. So, and that, that's why I think that that's what actually gets people to, to, to act and to reduce or, or alleviate fear, fear, you know? I'm, I'm thinking of the word simplification, how valuable I think it is when it comes to money because we have so many fears so many so many aspects of managing money of our finances feel very overwhelming thinking about all these exactly. things taxes and retirement and saving and investing and all these different things it just it feels like so much so if what i'm kind of hearing you talk about is is that idea of helping to simplify the process and and move people from being overwhelmed and stuck and un, and unable to move because they're afraid of doing something wrong and making it really simple and illuminating a path forward that people can say oh yeah okay i can do this simple task and in doing exactly. that they're 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 moving along the the journey exactly the two things with that one is the first module you can't pass to get to the other modules and that's organization <laughs> So the first module is always organization. It's like organizing your accounts, making sure that everything is flowing in the in the right way that we want it to. And that that just opens up everything, you know. So you can't pat, you can't become a client unless you go through the organization module. And that gets a lot. That's that's a tough one. You know, we ask for a lot of you know, you just you just give us anything you can give us that you think that would help us build this picture and we're gonna organize it for you. We're gonna file it for you, we're gonna get a digital file for you. You're going to have a platform where you can go and see all everything one spot. So you have to go through that organization. Two, it's just like it's just like us, right? You know, we it's like uh, if you want to be successful, um, 
it's kind of like that conversation we've had in the past a little bit about being patient, you know, but it's like on a daily basis, it's like, you're, you're always kind of working towards that, that goal, like the little baby steps, you know what I mean? And then you're, and then enjoy that, you know, enjoying the journey. So those are the, that's what I would really like to get like to my, with my clients. Like I just would like more time with them, you know, and talk with them one-on-one with a coffee. To be honest, that would be like, that's like the next level where it's like just having those conversations. Cause every time they leave, they're just like, I feel so good after we've talked. (laughs) They're like, this is, this was the best ever, you know? And you're just like, yeah, we're just, you know, it's just cause you're finally, you're, 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 you're facing your fears, you know, you're getting stuff done and we're calming you of your, you know, your thoughts and anxieties, you know, because we're just doing little, little baby steps which I think is a good lesson for all of us. And, you know, it doesn't even be, you know, financial planning or finance related at all, but kind of whatever that challenge or goal is that you have, you know, go out there right away and get, get working on it, but just have a patient mindset of that. It's going to just every day you got to work on it, you know, little by little. And then you wake up, you pitch, pitch your head up and you're like, wow, I've accomplished a lot. You know, this is, this is awesome. You know, and I've always, I've always been like that where I've always been more of the journey person because I remember even like back in high school, we, we would have like, like a wrestling tournament and we'd get first or second, or, you know, we would do really well. And I, and I look back at pictures and I'm just like kind of straight face. And I'm like, I'm ready for Monday. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's nothing guys. What's Monday going to bring? Cause I don't want you guys to be, you know, you're going to be down and tired. Right. You know, we're just excited. And on Monday, I'm going to kick your butt. You know what I mean? We're going to be back to work. You know what I mean? And so I, I don't know if that's a good thing, to be honest. Like I've never, I've never really enjoyed the successes of that final. Because to me, nothing's really final. You know, I'm just always enjoying the journey. So I think that helps in the long run. I think I'd rather do that. But at the same time, you know, I think at least acknowledging what you did do and, and enjoying that, at least for some moments, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and that's probably something I could do a little better, to be honest. But yeah, do you have a difficult time looking back and in, in recognizing and honoring some of your own success and the things that you've accomplished along the way? I'm, I'm with you in that. There's probably a, a balance that exists, but that, but if if the mindset is when something go- good does happen, if it's just kind of nope, back to work on to the next thing. Are, are you robbing yourself of a lot of opportunity to experience some of that gratitude and to recognize yourself and be proud of yourself of what you have put in? Is that something that, well, you mentioned that you, it's something that maybe you are. Yeah, I'm working on it. Like I, I, I feel like because of being more present, you know, that has allowed me to like, even in that moment to just say like, Hey guys, that was a, that was a big deal. What we just did was actually very, a very good thing, you know, and we should be happy for that. You know what I mean? So just recognizing it, I think is good. I think there's something in my that that there's something bigger in me that I'm trying to kind of weave my way through, and I just don't know what it is. But maybe that just keeps me going, right? You know what I mean. So maybe it's nothing. It's <laughs> it's just a mindset, right? Um, and I'm not like you know like the Debbie Downer on those days necessarily, you know, or anything. Like I'm not trying to be like, hey guys, that's you know that's nothing. You know what I mean? But but at the same time, I've just always kind of been where I'm like you know. I think there's, I think there's more here. Let's enjoy the, like, I, I guess what I'm saying is I enjoy, I, I enjoy the workouts better up to the, to the final match than I do the final match, you know? And I, all the time, I've always been like that. So, and that, I think that it goes back even with the financial planning is like, you know, all those little steps, you know, when you finally write that summary for the client and they come in and they say they feel so good. You know, I feel really good for that. I feel great that they feel that's that's the number one thing that I, you know, that I really respond to and I and I really appreciate hearing. But I always think about like what I really enjoyed was figuring out the puzzle, you know, to make this, you know, a full summary so that you could you could feel like something got accomplished. You know, I'm I'm more, hey, this was really fun, you know, and I'll feel that energy you know, right there in the moment. I'm like, this is, you know, we're just re, you know, we're just putting down contributions that somebody's doing in their retirement plan into a system. And I'm like, I can just feel the energy, 
you know, it's, it's good. It's good energy. And we know we're doing something good. That to me is just as good as, you know, that person, you know, having $2 million or something like that. You know what I mean? And so, which is, you know, it's, it's more difficult for, for most people to understand that, especially a client. But as time goes, as you continue to build a relationship with them, they do, they do find a little bit more value, I think, in the little things, you know, rather than the big meeting. Like we don't even do like annual meetings. We don't do that. You know, it's like, we want to talk to you like maybe 30 times this year. You know, how about that? Like, you know, let's do 30 little things instead of one like annual meeting where we're just going to show you your statement balances and tell you what you need to do. And we're not going to do nothing <laughs> because all those six things that we told you, you you're not going to do them. We're probably going to forget about them because we've got another client to go to, you know, and that's, that's a traditional like financial advising, you know, where we're like, well, we got those six things. Let's just do those six things. We'll talk to them six times <laughs> and maybe we'll talk to them a little longer in the last one, you know, isn't that more productive, you know? So this, this idea of, the process, the journey. In my first episode, Nate called it. He just calls it getting there, and we're we're in a forever process of getting there. there yeah, there's no, I love that. There's yeah. no there that we're going to get to. It's just been interesting that that's been a very common theme in these conversations that I've been having, and it seems to be, and I'm finding that for myself as well. As far as it seems to be such a healthy mindset when when we can appreciate the journey, we can appreciate the process, and not not be so focused on having this end destination in mind you mentioned the word workout and it, it, it takes me back it made me think of of running and i know that that's a big part of your life and and you'll share yeah. some of these running thoughts and i i guess i find myself wondering if this this kind of journey of of getting there or enjoying the process relates to your running yeah running has done a lot for me uh, so I, I think it it helps me with just having a healthy mindset um uh but, uh, but also I think it's, so a lot of times we'll, we'll have a lot of thoughts, right. And a lot of things that happen in, in a day to day, you know, or a week. And so for me, what running does or what, you know, for someone else, like whatever that walk is, or maybe they like whatever they do, but maybe even just going walking in the woods or, you know, something calming for them. But I think for me, the running is a couple of things. It, it allows me to, I'm, I'm very, I think health is very important. So it's, that's, that's huge. And that's, it's a beautiful thing that you get healthy while at the same time, mentally, I think it's even more uh, powerful on a, in a mental basis than it even is in a physical basis. But I think that it's great that it does both things. So I'm getting healthy, but it, um, what I found is just like walk, going on walks and, and then going on runs the the clarity and the the formulation of of multiple thoughts come together and uh and i think it just allows me to you know to really just you know be in that moment you know i'm i'm really in the moment when i'm running you know and and it's and a lot of times i don't want to try to like start my run with like too many thoughts about like what i have to do tomorrow or something like that i try to like blank out a bit and then just allow things to come to, and then and again, it's more my self uh, awareness journey. And I'm just working on myself, but I think those things are important because that allows me to be like, the, like to be the best person, like say for for my family or for my clients, right? You know, so I think it's an outlet for you know that to me, that's my outlet. But I think for everybody, just to have an outlet to to kind of to allow yourself to you know allow certain thoughts to kind of formulate you know, to reduce your, you know, stress, uh, you know, to, you know, just be, just be, you know, uh, just enjoy, you know, like doing nothing, you know, in a sense. Dude, that was hard for me like 10 years ago. I mean, I would never, like even, even now I'll admit like to watch a movie, that's very difficult. <laughs> I'm like, what are we going to do for two hours? So, cause I'm very curious and I, I mean, I'd rather read probably two hours, but um, so, but for running and I always say to myself, like, I don't want to go, like I always said to myself when I start, first started running is like, anytime you have a half an hour to yourself, go for, go for a run. So it was always half an hour. Now it's an hour. It's like, okay, now if I have an hour and I try to just take everything and just shut it off, you know, and it allows me to, 
you know, reestablish my, myself and my thoughts, you know, that's, that's my time. You know what I mean? So. Shut everything off. Are you running in silence? You know, uh, some people say to do that. I, I, I don't, I, I do listen to music, which is, uh, I, I do sometimes I'll turn the music down and listen to my footsteps, you know? And so I'll, I'll do that as well. Sometimes whether I think the music is on or not, I don't even know. Cause I'm, in a different place, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, they call that like the runner's high. And if you haven't experienced it, go try it. I would say for everybody, if you, you should be walking two to three times a week, just go walk. And walking is actually more, even healthier than running. So, and a fast walk is probably the best thing that someone could do. Or a hike, for example, is a really good thing for someone to do. Um, but you'll find yourself in kind of a euphoric state that that is very clear and you're just I don't even you can't really even explain it you're just you're not thinking you're not thinking about like anything else you know what I mean uh but music to me is very important a lot of times I'll listen to worship music or or even like I'm really breaking down like some of the words that just kind of get into your mindset you know and you're and you just start to kind of think on them you know what I mean so I think, I think to me, I enjoy the music. It's usually, it's not very uh, like, you know, if you go to like a running Spotify running channel, that's t- like, I don't like that's too, like too fast. You know what I mean? What you want to do is maybe slow it down a little for me, slow it down. And, and I'm not trying to run for necessarily for speed. You know, I'm just trying to run more for, for the enjoyment. You know, and a, a lot of my breakthroughs have really come through, through running. So. And I think that going back to like our beginning of our conversation, a lot of this really stemmed from, again, looking at people around me that, you know, are not healthy or maybe they passed away. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like, I just like, I'm taking a, I'm, like I'm stepping up my perspective on health in general and just being a healthy person for my friends and family for longer. You know what I mean? So which is also a great benefit and just, you know, being able to be there mentally and physically for, for people, you know, another 40 or 50 years from now is, you know, really the goal. So. Well, and, and I think everything that you've shared in our conversation today, in my mind, all contributes to health, right? I think people tend to yeah, jump right, right to the, the, the physical health, but the more that I explore and in some of, the coaching work that I do with Nate, who I interviewed on the first episode, you know, the, the more I, I recognize and realize how much our emotional selves, our spiritual selves, whatever that looks like for people, all of these things tie very directly into our physical health. And, and all of it is very much aligned. And so as I just hear the word health now, I have this perspective of being self-aware, reflecting on our lives, taking time to pause making sure that we are forgiving people, all of these things in my mind are contributing to what, what health is. And it shows up, it, it affects physically how I feel in my body. It affects how I show up every day mentally and emotionally for the people around me. And so I guess as we kind of land the plane and wrap up our conversation, I, I want to take another moment to recognize that the work that you do While I know it feels probably so innate to you at this point that you've been doing it for 10 years, what important work it is. And I want to just take a moment to to pause and and make sure that we recognize the the work that you do and the reflection that you do and the running and the the forgiveness and everything that you've shared today, I think is worth really celebrating and recognizing. And, And I appreciate you being willing to share some of this process and some of this journey with us because I think we can all learn something from it. So thank you for, once again, as we have many times over many years here, thank you for engaging in a conversation like this. 100%. I appreciate that. And yeah, I think the culmination of all those things actually has allowed me to, to help more people, you know? So, you know, if you can't, you can't really help other people, you know, unless you kind of start with yourself, you know, you've got to be a healthy version of yourself. And and I'm starting to, it's starting to get clearer and clearer where I'm just being more, my thought pattern is being, you know, to be more helpful to, to other people, like a hundred percent, 
which is a very selfless, you know, thing. And, but it's, it's, and it feels great. You know, it's a great feeling and I'm not looking for, again, I, I, I appreciate my, the biggest thing I like when like to win a prize, we were talking about like winning the championship. And it's like, I've noticed that I, I'm not into that, but I do appreciate when someone's like, Hey, I really appreciate I thank you for helping me. You know what I mean? And that's, that's like, really, that's the, at the end of the day, that's the, the kind of the words of affirmation. Right. I think that's what that, that what is. And, and, you know, and I'm, and I, that's all I'm really, you know, looking for. I, I don't really help people to, to necessarily for any personal gain, but I think that's like what we should do, you know, as, as human beings. And if we have a perspective on things that maybe is a little clearer than others, who knows what other people are going through. And so go out there and help someone. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate every time we get to connect like this. If, if people wanted to find you or get in touch with you or learn more about what you do, what are some ways that people could do that? Uh, I've been using Instagram a lot uh, for kind of my self-reflection, you know, self-awareness journey. So that would probably be the best thing to, to do. All my handles on every social media is Agile, J-R-O. So it's Agile, J-R-O. So you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. All that they're all the same. Yeah, that probably you know, and you can shoot me a message if you want to chat or, or if you just want to follow along. It, it's all it's all good. We'll keep sharing your story, and thank you for sharing it with us today. I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate it too, and you're doing a great job, and uh, look forward to hearing more of what you what you have going forward. Thanks, man. It means a lot. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to listen to the episode this week. I hope that you enjoyed my conversation with John. If you did, would you mind taking a moment to leave a rating on whatever podcast platform you're listening on? It would really mean a lot to me and help me grow the show. Be sure to tune in next week on Tuesday as I'll have another new episode coming and follow the show so that you're notified when new episodes are released. See you next time.